How much can grip size actually affect things like your delivery into the ball, your miss, your dispersion, things like that? Well, today, we're gonna find out. Welcome back to Elite Performance Golf Studios, and as you already know, we are the home of technical and in-depth reviews and tests to help you guys out and give you more knowledge and information. So if you haven't already subscribed, please, please do head down, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell as well, so you do not miss any of our in-depth tests and reviews. And today, grip size. It's a topic that has been spoken about hundreds of millions of times, but realistically, not many golfers have been able to actually come and test different grip sizes, which is generally a part of our fitting process here, as it's very, very important. Um, so yeah, we're gonna be kind of discussing the variables that we could maybe expect to see. Again, there's a lot of theory in fitting and theory doesn't always pan out. In fact, it rarely pans out. Um, so we're gonna be discussing the variables and as always, we're gonna be hitting a lot of shots on quad to actually see the difference in these grips. Right, so starting off with the standard size grip and same as always, I'm gonna hit 20 shots with each. I'm just gonna show you a few and then at the end of every set, I'm just kind of gonna talk about what I felt with the grip. And then same as always, we look at all the data at the end, look at everything we think could possibly happen. And yeah, see, uh, see what the results are. Tiny bit thin. Wouldn't grumble though. So specs wise, we've got a standard length club, T100S head, which is the head that I do normally game. It's just standard loft, standard lie. I haven't messed about with any of that. Um, and dynamic gold 120X100 shaft, which I've been dabbling about with a little bit at the minute and I quite like. So I'm gonna keep that in for all of them. So obviously the head and shaft length and everything will be the same. I'll just be changing the grip. So let's touch a little bit on the theory behind different grip sizes then and what that possibly could create. And as we go through, I'm kind of gonna be discussing different topics throughout the video and dropping in different theories and ideas and what we might look for in fittings. So the theory's always kind of been that a smaller grip could create a more kind of handsy release pattern, more hooky, more left side bias. And then the opposite with a bigger grip, kind of quietening down the hands, creating more of a pushy, blocky kind of shot pattern. So depending on if you've got a hook or a push or whatever you want to call it, changing the grip size could help prevent that shot. Now we don't necessarily try and go down that route. If I'm honest, it's more about finding a good comfort level, which I'll touch on later, but that's kind of the theory behind what you might read on a lot of forums. So let me, let me know down below. Do you think that's going to be the same for me? Do you think I'm going to see that pattern today? That looked like a really good strike. Yeah, like that one. I like that one. So that's my typical miss, I would say. Little bit of a long lefty one, face way too close to the path. So ended up 18 yards left of target, missing green all day long. It's gonna be very interesting um, as we go through to see if does that bigger grip start to nullify that shot for me. Nice little fade. Ooh. Do not mind that one either. The first and most obvious one is obviously going to be hand size relative to grip size, getting the right size grip to fit in your hand. And this is obviously a very, very important part of it. I mean, if you haven't dabbled around with different grips or tested different grips, there is kind of online tools, kind of like this golf pride tool that you can use. And relative to either the glove size or your hand size, it will kind of give you different ideas about what grip size could possibly suit you. There's obviously lots and lots of different variables, different palm lengths, different finger lengths, 
So it is kind of a, a nice starting point, I guess. It's a, it's a bit of a guide, a bit of an idea of where to start. So, I mean, a lot of the things that we're looking for within a fitting is to make sure we get that nice fit. So we find if something is too small, then it's going to increase grip pressure. It might be too much overlap, it might feel too small, or there could possibly be gaps created between the hand and the grip, and that's going to increase grip tension, which we really don't like because once we're holding onto it too tight, it just it creates tension all up, which hinders release, kind of increase injury. There's lots of negative kind of things that can come alongside that. Um, and the same, if it's too big, kind of grab this, which I will be doing a video on at some point soon, the old Jumbo Max. And again, this is, this is theory, right? Because Bryson will say that something like this, he feels, increases his control. Although in theory, if we look at the gaps that are kind of created between my palm and my finger, we kind of maybe would like to see a little bit more of, of this little finger hooking around the top to actually give me more kind of stability in theory, like we would if I grip my gamer. Now we see a little bit of a gap there, but I feel like it's sat comfortably in that part of my hand. In that part of my hand, that's touching a little bit, so I could maybe play a little bit of a bigger grip, but I just feel like it sits nicely in my hand and it's comfortable and the pressure's good. And that, that's really what, what I want to see for the most part when we're looking at size. Like it fits nicely in the hand, it feels comfortable, the grip pressure is, is, is in a good spot that allows a nice release. It doesn't make us hold on to it too tight. Well, this is, this is quite big, isn't it? <laughs> Can't wait to put this in the club and, uh, and give it a go. But yeah, it's just, and it's the same with kind of the bottom hand as well. We kind of just want to see it just sitting in those fingers. There's not too much overlap. There's not like a big gap where it could almost feel like it slides off because both of those could kind of create excess tension being too big or too small. So it's just getting the right fit in the hands to make it comfortable and the grip pressure correct for the player. Right, so jumping into the mid-size, um, I've hit 10 shots with standard size. I'm gonna go 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, so I'm not too tired with each. Um, so jumping into mid-size, and also I'm not gonna summarize at the end of each section. I'll leave that to the summary. So, so it's just gonna be the shots. And yeah, that is just noticeably bigger in the left hand. I mean, I've never gamed mid-size. I've always gamed standard or standard with a couple of extra layers of tape. I mean, it wasn't the best shot, quite a little bit healy. Still wouldn't be upset with that shot. That felt really nice, that one. So that's a good swing. A good swing. Yeah, nice. Yeah, so the grip size and therefore the grip pressure that that creates is very, 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 very important. And another topic that I'm going to touch on briefly-ish is going to be swing weight. Um, so before I get too technical about swing weight, the main point is just to be aware of what you are doing to your club. And what we mean by that is if we're adding mass to the butt end, say head end, butt end, if we're adding mass to the butt end of the club, we're going to be dragging the balance point more towards the butt end of the club. And that is going to reduce swing weight. So it's gonna make the head feel lighter because we're adding mass up this end. We're dragging the balance point up this end. So it's going to make the head feel lighter and that creates obviously a lighter swing weight. Now, you know, we can again go down the rabbit hole of what that exactly means or what that's gonna do for you. But the reality of it is everyone's gonna be slightly different. I'm gonna save that for another video. I will test that properly. But for this video, 
I'm using tall velvets. So the standard size is like 51, 52 grams. The mid size is like 53, 54 off the top of my head. So there's not a lot of difference between those two grips. So if you were changing from a standard to a mid size tall velvet grip, I would not worry about the balance point whatsoever. Now the jumbo jumps up to 61 grams. So it's about a 10 gram difference from the standard up to the jumbo, which is gonna create maybe just over two swing weights difference in terms of making the head feel lighter. That for me is still borderline, like for most people, probably wouldn't think that you're gonna to need to get your whole set rebuilt. Um, but again, it's definitely maybe worth testing uh, or, or talking to a fitter if you're, if you're looking at going jumbo. Um, and then you've got your extremes, so kind of your plus four. So you know, the plus four standard, it's actually still pretty light, kind of low 50s, but the plus four jumbo, that sort of thing. Now we're talking about adding some weight. I mean, this weighs just over 80 grams. So if you went from a standard tour velvet at like 50, 51, jumped up to this at like 82, 83, now you're really talking about, well, that's a big difference. You know, that's going to drag a hell of a lot of swing weights up the top of the club. I mean, you're probably talking about adding 15, 16, 17 grams of, of head weight back into the head to get the swing weight back where it was if you put a plus four jumbo on there, which again, that's, that's just gonna create a really, really heavy golf club. So this wing weight might be right, but you're adding 30 grams up here, you're adding 15, 16 grams down here. That, that whole weight is massive. And that generally speaking would not be a good thing to do for 95% of people. So again, if you're looking at going that extreme, it's worth talking to someone, maybe coming to see a fitter and actually just testing out some swing weights and some grip sizes and see what it does for you. Because I wouldn't just go, oh, I need to add 15 grams back into the head because I put a big grip on because it will probably completely screw your clubs up. So don't do that. So it's just a part of this video to be aware of. If you're not sure, drop me a message, put a comment below and I'll, uh, I'm more than happy to get back to anyone. Right, so another 10 with mid-size done, now into jumbo. Yeah, I don't think I've ever even hit a jumbo grip before, just because I don't know, mid-size always felt a little bit on the big side for me, so I just didn't really, didn't think to actually even try a jumbo, really. But having said that. <laughs> Still got the left miss, although it's clinging on. Catch a bit. Yeah, it's pretty good. It doesn't actually feel as much of a leap from the mid-size up to the jumbo as it did from the standard to the midsize. So going from the standard to the midsize, there was quite a noticeable like, yeah, this is bigger. But from midsize to this jumbo, just checking it is actually a jumbo, it, it, it gets noticeable, but I wouldn't say like, wow, that, that's massively bigger. Oh, that felt nice. Interesting. Very interesting. And so far, this is more consistently left than any of the other ones, so. There we go, it's all pretty straight. But again, that's, that's just me, I'm adjusting. This is the problem with these tests. Ultimately, in any fitting scenario, it's kind of trying to make a decision based upon what we feel is going to consistently help your negative pattern. So whatever your miss is, we need to try and figure out what will be the best option to help nullify that. And there's so much theory as we've spoken about and we will speak about within this and within the whole fitting scenario. Theory doesn't mean anything until you get it in your hands. So that was, that actually felt like a pretty good swing as well. And it was a great strike. Still left. Still left. Right. Let's get the rest of these 10 and look at this data. Right, it's time for that all important data. I'm going to start off with the ball flight data page. Obviously the club data page really is kind of the delivery of the club is what we kind of want to see, but we're going to start here um, to see if there is any differences. Ball speed, 130, 130, 131, no different there. Wouldn't expect there to be really. Launch and spin, 17, 17, 16 and a half. Again, 0.4, that's 
more than a variation that that would be me. I'm not going to say that's anything to do with grip. And then spin six, 61, six, like it's, there's nothing there at all really in terms of the launch and spin, which we wouldn't really expect. Carry 185, 186, 187. The jumbo was the least consistent, I guess, is probably the only thing to pick out there, but not by much. So dispersion, which is obviously a massive thing when it comes to grips. I mean, I, I don't really like looking at these charts, to be honest. I mean, according to this, the standard was the worst with the biggest right to left and then the midsize and the jumbo were identical. But again, I don't really like looking at that on average because you could hit one there with the standard, one there with the standard, but everything else within two yards and it would look pretty rubbish. So I don't really like looking at that. So the average offline in terms of 20 shots with each, the average offline was five yards left with the standard, four yards left with the midsize and five yards left with the jumbo. So on average, we were kind of four or five yards left with each. So realistically on that and on the dispersion there, there probably wasn't loads in it in terms of, of just that variable for me, but there was other things that we'll touch on later in terms of the consistency. So really in terms of the, the actual ball flight numbers, there's not much. So let's jump over to the, uh, the, the club data. Right, so we saw that there was not much in the ball speed, club speed, 96, 97, 97. Again, maybe a little bit quicker with midsize and jumbo, but less than one mile an hour. So I'm not realistically gonna say that that is 100% the grip. I don't think that's enough of a difference there. I was slightly more efficient with the standard, which is, which is obviously good, but not what we wanna see in this test. So dynamic loft was no different. So it didn't create any kind of variables of me adding or taking away loft. They were all 23.7, 23.7, 23.8, nothing there. Dynamic lie, nothing there. Didn't change that delivery at all. So really like this is kind of the area we wanna look at path and face in relationship to the path. So we can see that angle of attack again, did not change. Path again, it was really pretty similar. Um, 1.5 inside, 1.5 inside, 0.7 inside. So you can maybe say I was slightly less inside with the jumbo, but again, realistically, that's too small of a difference. And this is too small of a data set to, for me to actually say that created that variable change. I don't think it did. Now, this is obviously one of the really, really important factors. And actually, I'll talk about this a little bit in the summary, but the least close was the midsize. The standard size is 3.4 closed but in relationship to the path it's slightly better than the jumbo because i was actually slightly more inside on average with the standard grip so therefore the more inside we are the, the more we can get away with the face being more closed because we're swinging more right if that makes sense the more neutral we are with the path like i was with the jumbo if we're swinging zero and the face is 3.7 degrees closed, then it's obviously going left. Or if I was say six into out and the face was three closed, then that actually wouldn't be too bad. So I was slightly more inside with the standard. So therefore that relationship is slightly better than the jumbo. So with that, the jumbo I would say was the worst. Second would be standard. And then the midsize, we were 1.5 inside and 2.5 closed. So the face was one degree less closed with the midsize than it was with the standard and the jumbo on average. And yeah, I did kind of feel that, to be honest. Again, I'll talk about it a little bit more in the summer in a minute, but it did seem to gel a little bit better. So in terms of ball flight, not really much. In terms of dispersion, not really too much, I wouldn't say, for me. But yeah, we can see on average that the face was less closed with the jumbo. So before I keep waffling on, let's jump into the summary and talk a little bit more about that. Right, so there we go, we looked at the data and I guess the first thing to point out is the same as with all of my tests, this is for me. Everyone does not react the same, therefore everyone does not get the same results. In order to see what is best for you, you have to come and try it. So the things that we've touched on before, kind of grip pressure, that's a big one that I find. For me, I kind of, I didn't really feel like there was much difference for me. I've kind of worked a little bit on being a little bit more relaxed in the hands and the wrists throughout the swing. Again, for, for a lot of people, I do find if they have something slightly bigger, they don't have to hold onto it so tight. So that can be a massive positive when working on certain things within the swing. Um, 
secondly, kind of the rate of rotation. I didn't really see too much. I personally feel like this test is a lot like shaft weight. If you go too light or too heavy, there's kind of a negative effect. If you go too big or too small, there's a negative effect. So I feel like for me, the midsize and slightly smaller, which typically I'm settling on standard with like three extra layers, two to three extra layers at the moment, that does seem to be pretty optimal for me in terms of it felt the most comfortable. Now that I feel is one of the biggest things in, in golf equipment ever in terms of the way a, a shaft feels, the weight of it, the swing weight, the way it looks, the way the face feels and how the grip feels to hold in your hand is massively underestimated. I feel like when I went back to the midsize from the jumbo, it felt more comfortable and where I was trying to kind of maybe just make a better swing, I felt that enabled me to actually make a better swing and that is the key comfort and confidence and the ability to swing how you want to swing and that's exactly what we're trying to do in fitting we're kind of trying to give you a club to enable you to make the best swing that you can with the best results that is that's it that is literally it so yeah i kind of off the back of that the the kind of the bryson jumbo max xl grip test is probably going to be a bit a bit pointless but it's still going to be a bit of fun and it'll be interesting to to kind of see what happens with that so i'll probably still do it um, but yeah, let me know what you thought. Let me know if you've got any questions below. More than happy to answer any questions. Let me know what you want to see next. Please make sure you subscribe because we're going to have more coming. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one.